Yo, what's going on? You know exactly what it is. Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you for Halloween 2022. Let's get right into it. Lomachenko versus Jermaine Ortiz in a fight on Saturday night. Hey, he's jumping back into the ring. Ten months since he last fought Kami. And then he went into the war, obviously, over with Ukraine versus Russia. And he came back and had his first action in a long, long time. Returned back to Madison Square Garden to fight Jermaine Ortiz. And look, you have a lot of young Lions in this division at 135. Obviously, you have Devin Haney, who had his rematch win over George Cambosis Jr. in Australia down under recently to retain his four belts to be undisputed at 135. So this was a big fight for Lomachenko. Coming off a long layoff and he's facing a young Lion. So I didn't watch this fight last night, but I looked at the highlights. I looked at some of the, the rounds and the play-by-plays. And the way I had it, I had it scored 8-4. to four. I thought that Lomachenko, he showed the ring rust. You saw some of the effects of the layoff. And look, let's be honest. Jermaine Ortiz, he looked really sharp for a young guy. 16-0, and 0, one draw, no losses. And Lomachenko... Two losses, one to obviously, uh, damn, uh, Orlando Salido, way, way, way back in the day. And then his recent loss against uh, Teofimo Lopez in a highly contested fight where he lost, I think, two or three of his belts. And then he had um, this recent fight with Jermaine Ortiz. So you had two very, very high level fighters and they had sparred against each other. Lomachenko actually had Ortiz as a sparring partner. In the training camp for Richard Kami. So they knew each other a little bit. So you look at the fight early on. I thought Ortiz did some good things. I thought it was a 4-2 fight going through six rounds. I thought it was a very highly spirited fight. And then around round six or round seven, Ortiz switched to southpaw. And I, I like the, the change in tactics. It's not something he hasn't done before. And it's something he's comfortable with. And Lomachenko adjusted accordingly. He came on late into the fight and he took care of business. Respect to him. But I thought Ortiz had a lot of moments in the fight where he was able to stay on Lomachenko. When Lomachenko, in the rare moments where he would take a minute off or let's say 15 seconds off, man, Ortiz would be on his head, running up on him, throwing combinations, going to the body. At one point, one of my favorite combinations, and I was actually doing this in the gym earlier today with one of my buddies, you know, shout out Steve Franks, man. We we um, we do definitely do work with the boxing. I was working on the 2-1. So I'm southpaw, Stevie's orthodox, but we're working on the lead hand cross. So 2-1 and then turn, catch the, the shot with your lead hand and then come right back with the two so around it might have been round seven or eight Loma threw the jab and as he stepped off as we did in our drill Ortiz came right back with the two bop caught Loma and you don't really see that often against Lomachenko but I don't think that's because Lomachenko part of that is ring rust but part of that is because I think Ortiz is a high level fighter and I'm gonna tell you what Jermaine Ortiz is on my radar now I wasn't paying attention to this fight, to be completely honest with you guys. But now, after seeing the highlights, Jermaine Ortiz is on my radar as a fighter to watch out for at 135. He showed me a lot against a very high-level fighter. Rusty or not, don't matter. Even a rusty Lomachenko is a problem for 90% of the fighters out there. So the fact that Ortiz was able to come in and do what he did tonight, highly impressed. At the end of the fight, the judges' scorecards were... 7 to 5, 8 to 4, and 9 to 3. And that made sense to me. I could have had a swing round either way for either Ortiz or Lomachenko. My personal score was 8 to 4. So the 8 to 4 score made sense to me, but I could see a swing round that would make it 7 to 5 in favor of Lomachenko, you know, making a closer fight or another swing round making it uh more uh easier fight for Lomachenko at Nine to three. So, either way, great win for Lomachenko off the layoff. He showed up and showed out. 
And a great showing for Jermaine Ortiz. Because, look, if I don't like you, I'm not going to rem remember your name, to be quite honest. So the fact that I remember his name and I remember his punches and some of the combinations he was able to land and the poise that he showed at such a young age, I'm really going to be looking out for this kid, man. That being said, at the end of the fight, Devin Haney was out there. And then also, Alexander Usyk was out there as well. So the Alexander Usyk was ringside, kind of rubbing his chin, looking at the middle of the ring. And Lomachenko was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Devin Haney, with the uh, uh, person asking questions, da 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 and I like the respect between the two, but I also like the confidence. Lomo was like, you know, hey, Devin Haney, great champion. He did what he was supposed to do. And Haney was like, look, I saw his fight. It wasn't his best performance, but he did what he had to do. And I'd be happy to have a fight with him. Let's work on the contract. Da 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 da. And then the announcer said, you, and he talked about it. He said, you went down to Australia. What do you think about? The opposite now that you have the belt. So, and Haney said, look, I went down to Australia. I've met all their demands. And I went down there, got my belts, came back up here as a champion. So let's see if Loma's about the same thing. And Lomachenko said, you know what? Hey, I said that whatever the cost may be, I'm willing to take that. And look, let's talk about it. That's the way champions are supposed to be. And I, I hope we get the fight coming up soon. And I believe we will get the fight because I think they're cut from a different cloth. And I didn't want to go into it in this episode, but the Terrence Crawford fight and the versus Earl Spence, that's been postponed because now either Crawford or Spence, I don't remember which one, they're fighting somebody different in December. So that lets you know that they're not fighting coming up in November, which is highly disappointing. They're just messing around. You, you guys are the best in your class. The creme de la creme. And... You're avoiding each other because of financial issues. I, I don't know what the case may be. I'm not in their shoes. I don't know what's going on between both camps. But what I do know is back in the day, we didn't have all this posturing between a Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns or Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberta Duran or Sugar Ray Leonard and a Wilfred Benitez or a Roberta Duran and... Tommy Hearns, right? Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman. The fights got done in a timely fashion instead of all this posturing and BS back and forth. It's really a shame because it, it hurts the sport of boxing. And we've had such a good run in the past, I'd say, three years. Especially Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Look, I've had my criticisms of Wilder. However, that put aside, that man went out and said, look, that's the best. I'm going to fight him. I don't want to hear nothing else. Win, lose, or draw, I'm going to go out fighting the best. That's what it's supposed to be. Now, you can say, I love Tyson Fury, or I hate Tyson Fury. You can say, I love Deontay Wilder, or I hate Deontay Wilder, or you can be indifferent. However, you cannot say that those guys did not step up at the time when it was meant to happen and got the done. All right, I believe that out, but they got it done. That's the way that you want competitors to be. So, look, I, I hope this fight gets made because I wasn't that hyped over the Cambosis and Haney rematch, but I would be hyped over a Lomachenko and Haney match because that's more of a competitive match. You have the best from Ukraine versus the best from the U.S., high-level fighters, and Loma brings more than George Cambosis. No disrespect, but... Lomachenko, he's on a different level. That's the Matrix. And Haney, I think that he is an ascending version of the Matrix from the USA. So that's the matchup I want to see. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, leave your comments below and we're going to get back at it. We have a big fight coming up next week with um, Dimitri Bivol. So let me know what you guys uh, think of that. I'll be dropping a video on that and we're going to get back at it. Until next time, peace.